did not remember it at all. Okay. And that's, that's fair. So the first thing you do is you set the bottom, set the bottom equal to zero. So X minus two equal to zero and you solve for X. Okay. So this, this becomes X equals two. Is that, is that okay? Clear? Yeah. This is what's called a vertical asymptote. So at X equals two, that's a, that's a, a vertical line. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it in a different color just because it'll sort of stand out a little better. Um, this is the line X equals two. Okay. Now, when it's in this form, and there's a lot going on here. When it's in this form right here, this number right here is the horizontal asymptote, but only when it's in this form. Okay. So there's there's a lot to remember. So, and it's y equals one. So that is that is uh, again another line here. It's a dashed line. Good, good to label that y equals one. And that gets us to be able to answer questions like domain range, increasing, decreasing, et cetera. But we need to know what the shape of the graph looks like. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. One is to know that the parent function for this is one over x. And the graph of one over x always looks like this. Do you know how accurate your graph needs to be? Um, not, no. It doesn't need to be super accurate. Okay. So based on what you just said, to graph this, I'm just going to draw in the parent function, which means it look like that and like that. Okay. And again, that's not accurate, but that is approximately no. what it is. Okay. Okay. So now we can answer questions about domain and range. So the domain is broken apart by the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is kind of the separator. And remember, domain is the x values. So it's so it's everything from minus infinity to two, two to positive infinity. It's everything but two. That two is a vertical asymptote. Uh, you cannot divide by zero. So when x is two, you're dividing by zero. That's bad. And then you're supposed to put what's called the union operator in between them. Yeah. That just means or. Yeah. Okay. The range. The range is typically broken apart by the horizontal asymptote. Typically. These are like generalizations. So does it always work? No, but this is, you know, this is what we have here. Um so the range is broken apart. It's like the 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 domain is, but it's the y values. It goes down forever up to positive one. So you can think of like this going, this, this going, it goes down forever. And then on the other side, it goes, it goes up forever. Like that. Okay. So unfortunately, everything we're doing only applies to this problem. Like, it's not like you're getting a bunch of these that, yeah. that you can do. The next one's totally different. None of this applies to that. The only thing that might apply here is increasing means it's going up and to the right. Decreasing is down and to the right. So looking at this graph, does it ever go up and to the right? And you're always going to the right. You're never going to the left, up and to the right. No. No. So this, this has none, no, or NA, I don't know, whatever you guys are doing in class. There's other ways to answer this. It is decreasing everywhere on its domain. Like it's not decreasing over all the numbers because it's broken up here, but it is going down into the right, down into the right. Like that. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So like I said, the rest of these two, three, four, five, six, they're all different. Uh, kind of. I guess. I guess like four, four and two are kind of the same, and three is kind of like two and four. But where do you want us to go next? Um, can we do number five? Sure.
All right, so this one again, just completely different than the others. You got a square root function. The, the square root graph looks like, like this, okay? But this has a bunch of transformations. So it's not particularly useful uh, to know this because it, it really does move around quite a bit. Um, are you allowed to use a graphing calculator on this? Um, she said we could use Desmos, but like it won't be um, provided like for the actual quiz. So you're not going to have a computer for the quiz. Is that right? No. This is all by hand. Okay. So th th that's where, that's why I'm asking. Cause if, if you, if you had access to technology, we would just graph this and, and see the graph. That's, that's really, that's really how you do these problems. So since you don't have that, um, the next best, best option is to, is to make a table. Okay. But you have to know, you have to remember the parent function. So uh, X, y equals the square root of x, so 0, 1, 4, and 9. So the reason I'm choosing these numbers for the parent function, you're you're expected to know this. You're expecting for the square root of x, it's 0, 1, 4, 9. The output is 0, 1, 2, and 3, like that. Now, what, what our goal here is, and this is where it gets a little bit awkward, is, is on these x values, you want these x values to be inside here. So like it's you're 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 literally setting minus x plus two equal to zero. Minus x plus two equal to one. And I'm I'm setting them equal to this this here. Minus x plus two equal to four, minus x plus two equal to nine. The reason is when you solve these equations, x equals two, x equals uh, one, x equals um, negative two, x equals negative seven. These are the new values that go in your table. Okay, and, and if I've lost you, that this is this is the challenge because you have to know how to get these new x values so that when you graph this new one, you can actually take the square root of it. Okay, so when x when x is two, negative two plus two is zero. The square root of zero is zero. Minus three gives you minus three. So you, you put the x into the equation, and then um, that gives you your y, basically? Exactly. But you have to know which x is to choose. Like, you can't just choose them randomly, or you will never you'll, – you'll just get ones that don't work. You'll get, like, the square root of 5, which you don't know. But yeah. by doing this, this, this right here is the transformation. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because it's probably not that obvious what a negative inside parentheses does, plus 2, and there's a negative here. Um, there's another way to do it, but I'm sort of going through that quickly. When x is 1, it's it's negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So you can see how you can see how this is working out now nicely, where we're going to have some points that we can graph. Yeah. So negative negative 2 is 2, plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And then the last one here is is zero. Nice. All right. So once you get once you get some points here, you can then go back and graph it. So we're going to graph two negative three, and then we're going to graph one negative two. Sorry, I put this in the wrong spot. That's really bad. <laughs> one one negative two. I'm like that doesn't look right. One negative two, uh, negative two, negative one, and then uh, negative seven zero. And and what you you have to remember with the root function is that it it starts somewhere. It starts somewhere and goes, and this one starts there and goes that way. And, and the graph is so important because it actually answers all the questions. You can do it without the graph, but it really is much easier if you have the graph. That's why they want you to graph this. Is that okay so far? Yes. Okay, so generally for the domain, you set the part part under the root greater than or equal to zero. So you'd set minus x plus two greater than or equal to zero. And you'd solve solve for x. You'd subtract two from both sides. Negative x greater than or equal to negative two. Divide by negative one. Remember that that flips it. x is less than or equal to two. 
And that's consistent with our graph here. The x values are all two and smaller. For basically everything from minus infinity to minus two. But this time it includes minus two, so there's a bracket. <laughs> And like the first one we did, why was there no bracket? So the that value is, yeah, the, that value is excluded. So you, you cannot divide by two. Uh, oh, division okay. by two is like a terrible thing to do in math and programming. Um, creates a lot of problems. So like these are really specific rules. Like the dividing by two only applies to this one because there's division. The square root of negatives only applies to this problem because there's square roots. Six is totally different. Four is totally different. Now the range, the range comes from, you know, if, if we if we kind of use words like top, to bottom, you know, min, a max, those kind of words. But it's the y value. Remember, it's always the y value. So the smallest y value is right here at negative three, and it and it does include it does include negative three. And then it's going upward, so it'd be a normal infinity. Yes. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So increasing again, is it going up and to the right? Um, no. No, but it is decreasing everywhere on its domain. So it's in decreasing from minus infinity to two. And did the, where'd the two come from? Uh, sorry, negative two. Sorry, negative. It comes from the domain. Negative. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason it's parentheses, and this, I mean, this is like a small thing, is is it's it's always increasing and decreasing are always what are called open intervals. So they, they never include brackets. And that's just kind of like a small side point, but I don't know if your teacher would. would um... yeah. And the, But, and then that one's similar to number six, right? With the same kind of thing would you put it into uh, unfortunately it's a cube root so it's completely different oh all right and that's what i was trying to say like these are all different okay okay that makes more sense especially with the how are you like supposed to know? Am I just supposed to know which graph like goes which way? Yes, yes. And I know you don't want to hear that. There's about 10 parent functions that you're supposed to know. And when, and when I say it that way, I mean like you've covered this in class or you've seen it before. Like it's not a it's not like like Very you know nice. general knowledge. It's it's that, you, and you've got one of each basically that you have to learn. You see, we can find a parent functions graph. Um, let's drop in the chat. Uh, that that could help a little bit here. Um, I'm just this is the first one I found. I don't. It's it's okay. It's not great, but it's it's. And just and you're supposed to like know which equation it goes with. Okay, yeah. Now that I'm like looking at this, I have seen this definitely.
Okay, so we got about five, look, we, we go a little bit longer, but I've got uh, five more minutes here-ish. You know, what? where would you like to go next? Um, uh, see if I can give you some time after, but. On uh, the same, like, paper that she sent you, number seven, the one that's like a word problem, kind of. Um, yes. I just don't know the equation to that. Okay. All right, so let me grab it here. Um now it says and, and it's you know this is that like it, sometimes it looks more difficult than it actually is it says in tiny county arizona the population was this and this year by 2014 the population had risen to 4800 write a linear equation okay so do you remember any equations of a line i don't not off the top of my head. Okay, so here's the here's the basic one. Y equals mx plus b. Yeah, okay. so I know that, yeah. All right, and so let's just go with this for now. To find the slope, you need two ordered pairs. So what you have to decide is it is, the, is it that um it, you know, like like what are the ordered pairs? So um they tell you that t equals zero is two thousand. Okay, so year two thousand two is actually And would it be 3,600 is the other part of it? Yes, and that's one ordered pair. And then the second one is for this other one for 2014, 14 comma 4,800. So could you, could you calculate the slope? I'm, what am I supposed to do for slope again? Okay, so that, that's fair to ask. It's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And this is this is one of those like you actually are supposed to know it, meaning like you learn this, you know it, it's part of this this course. And so we got x one, y one, x two, y two. So twelve thousand over. 1200, yeah, 1200 over. So 100? Yes, 100, okay. So that's the first part, y equals mx plus b, y equals 100x plus b. And then you're going to use one of the points to find b. So let's just use the first one. 3600 equals 100 times two plus B. Could you solve that for B for us? Is it three thousand four hundred? Okay, so oh, that goes back in here. So your equation is uh, y equals 100x plus 3,400, okay? But, and this is a big but, right? Um, the problem here, and I'm going to actually grab the problem again. It doesn't say to use y and x. It says to use p and t. And you have to decide, well, which is which? So t is the input, which is the x. P is the output, which is Y. So what I would tell you to do as a student, because this is really confusing the first time you do it, is to do it in terms of Y and X like you've always done. And then at the end, change it. Say, okay, Y is really P. And X is T? Yes. Is that the final equation? Yes. Okay. Okay, that 
makes so I just have to I need to get in my head the equations and the parent fu functions because once you like start it then I I like can go with it but I could not tell you how to start it you know what I mean So the last thing here, though, it says, what would the population be in 2021? So 2021 corresponds to T equals 21. And you're putting that value in, in for T. So it's 100 times 21 plus 3,400. So 2100 plus 3400 equals 5500. Okay. All right, so we do unfortunately have to stop here. I know there's more to do. Uh, 